Hey, this is Eric with The Off-Grid Guru, and for the premiere of this channel, I'm going to be releasing a series of videos covering the documentation of a radical architectural movement emerging in Pennsylvania. For the next two months, I'm going to be releasing interviews, home tours, and a full-length documentary. I'll be introducing you to a community of trailblazers whose alternative ideas have resulted in the construction of three unique and inspirational structures. To start telling this story, I'd like to take you on a trip down memory lane and show you some photos from a time before I was filming my life for the off-grid guru. Well, when I got to Pennsylvania, it turned out that there were actually two projects. The first one was a restoration project where we were going to rebuild an existing greenhouse. And there's a separate video for that project, so if you want to check it out, I'll have a link in the description. And the second was a groundbreaking standalone structure near Philadelphia. This Earthship inspired greenhouse was the first of its kind in America to be built within the city limits. I showed up in the backyard of Will Vogler, a family man who was determined to prove that alternative building techniques could work in Pennsylvania. Welcome, Eric. I'm really glad to be doing this with you here on site. How cool is that? Yeah, this is really inspirational and exciting. Uh, I just drove down from New York last week, three hours here to Pennsylvania. It's just outside of Philadelphia, so this is actually the first Earthship build within a major U.S. city, which is super exciting which is gonna push this really out into the mainstream and make it more accessible, more palatable for a lot of people. Uh, the first time I encountered Earthships was on family vacation. I rented one, me and my family, I was about 14 years old and I became super mega inspired by the fact that they were using recycled materials in these buildings, that there were palm trees growing inside, parakeets in the greenhouse. The whole thing was just absolutely mind blowing for a little 14 year old me. And so I had my eyes dead set on learning how these things worked. And right now I'm back on the ground here in Pennsylvania building this model, this greenhouse in someone's backyard. So it's just a great opportunity to be here and also to share this information, which I've turned from something that is really kind of hard to understand fr from the beginning for most people. You know what you're telling me, you're taking garbage and building houses with it. You know, you're growing your own food inside, you're, you know, containing and treating your own sewage, you're capturing rainwater, you don't need any uh, air conditioners or heating systems to heat and cool your home. You're essentially not really paying any bills once the house is, you know, constructed. So it's a little bit over the top to believe, and it's a bit far out. But it's real, and it's happening, and it could be happening in your backyard, and anyone can do it. You know, you can go off grid, you can be sustainable. There's a real on the ground movement that's happening in this day and age. I mean, it just so happened that my wife, she's a nutritionist. And so we had always been trying to uh, work with different um, greenhouses, growing our own food. It, it was struggling, you know, then we had to learn all about greenhouses and greenhouses have a short window of usefulness. And so our goal was to create something that we could use year, year round and an earthship type structure just made sense, you know, 60 to 70 degrees year round. In order to achieve this constant year round temperature, half of Will's greenhouse is buried under the ground. In order to reuse as many recyclable materials as possible, the building material of choice for this greenhouse was old car tires rammed with dirt. This really labor-intensive process is actually an excellent way to reuse something that would normally just be thrown away in a landfill. By ramming earth into the tires, you form a structural block that can be used for the foundation and even the walls of a house. The first day at the Ambler build was definitely a memorable one. I don't know if I've ever pounded just absolutely wet mud into tires, but it's not fun. When things did eventually dry up, we were able to make some headway and get some work done on these walls. So we are doing some rammed earth inside steel belted rubber casing, also known as used car tires. We're also using cardboard. It's a good way to eat up something that would normally be thrown away and it helps us to keep the dirt inside the tire because what we're trying to achieve here is a tire brick that's going to be filled with earth and we don't want the earth to be popping out the bottom. So we put the cardboard and then 
start filling it with dirt. And it's gonna take a ton of dirt. So I have some buckets prepared. And usually you see the part in the process where we're hitting it with the sledgehammer. But really, you can start pounding the tire, you know, use as little force as possible, as necessary, so just with your hands. So in the beginning, when you're pouring earth in here, you just taking your hands and pushing the tire, you know, pushing the dirt up into the sidewall here. That way you're only pounding with the sledgehammer in the end when you really are starting to get tight. And so the reason why we're doing this is <laughs> to make a, essentially it's going to become a 300 pound brick. So each tire is pounded in place and staggered so that there's two tires below, one tire here. And it creates a strong lattice work and a stable wall, a structural wall, which is also very thick and is going to hold a lot of temperature. The effect we're trying to get of this back wall is that it's going to maintain the heat in the building instead of letting it go away. So normally you have houses that are made where it's essentially just a box with systems in it. You know, a box that gets warm during the day and cold at night. And the way that you regulate the temperature is by burning fuel oil or using electricity in the form of air conditioning. Um, so the difference with an earthship or any rammed earth structure or any, you know, adobe or stone building is that that stone is going to be cool in the summertime and in the wintertime it is going to be warmer but that's why we're ramming the earth, the dirt in the tires you know it's it's a readily available material all over the world you know even when we're going to haiti india mexico jamaica puerto rico you can always find car tires because it's essentially a waste product so you're cleaning up the streets you're keeping them out of a landfill and you're turning them into a usable building material so phase two of the tire pounding after you've gotten as much into the sidewall as you can with your hands is going to be to, not with you know massive big swings so that you can't work for the rest of the day, but just little hits of the sledgehammer so that it pounds the dirt up into the sidewall. So as you're pounding the tire, the sidewall is gonna start puffing up. And you wanna make sure as you go around that it's a, an even firmness. So I just go around and check some of the spots where it's still soft and then wanna make sure that I hit that area a little bit more. And you'd be surprised how much dirt the tires will use up as you compress it in there. So yeah, the final process in leveling a tire is then taking the level on the top of the tire and making sure that, as we can see on this tire, it needs to go up on this side. So it just means that I need to pound some more earth into that side of the tire so that it comes up about an inch and then making sure that it's level like this as well. And so it needs to come up on this side. So all I'm gonna do now is go back in and sledge some more earth into basically from you know 12 o'clock to nine o'clock and then re-level it and re-level it until it's right and once you get the hang of it it goes quickly and you just make sure that each tire that you do in the series in the course is level to the one that you leveled originally level to itself level to the next one level to the next one will's son dominic came out to help us and uh it was really cute we got dominic here pounding his first tire Dominic, what are you doing? Oh, he's going for the... <laughs> Good job, buddy. You need a level. He's going for the swing.
In order to transition from the tire wall to framing the window boxes, a form was built that was reinforced with steel rebar and then concrete was poured in as well as some threaded rod that was pressed down into the form to create a level surface that we could later build the window boxes on top of. Will had told friends and local bars what he was doing and had amassed a huge collection of old glass bottles. By cutting the bottles in half and taping them together, a brick is formed that one can use to make a bottle brick wall. Compared to pounding tires, this technique is a lot less labor intensive and can really get the whole team in a good spirit. This is the second way in which this greenhouse consumes something that would normally be thrown out. Well, my time with the project was up, so this was the last thing that I saw of the greenhouse. I took a few selfies and was on my way. Nikki Rhodes, who was able to stay for the finishing of this project, provided the documentation and videos that I'm about to show you now. Finishing this bottle wall, putting a final layer of concrete on. And then we're gonna clean it off, clean off all the bottles just like this to create that beautiful stained glass effect on the bottles. The lighting's horrible. It's <laughs> alright. So the bottoms are sticking out. Then he's gonna pack that. And eventually. It's going to start looking like this. That's it for this video, but the story doesn't end there. After the completion of the Earthship-inspired greenhouse, Will founded something called the Tamaqua Sustainability Project, when him and his father and a group of volunteers built an off-the-grid homestead and educational center in Pennsylvania. Up next, I'm going to be releasing a documentary, home tours, and interviews surrounding this inspirational project, so if that's something that interests you, then be sure to subscribe.